Greetings, everyone. My name is Arif Ula, and we are here at Malcolm X Community Garden in beautiful Corona, Queens, NYC. Malcolm X Community Garden is a sanctuary and oasis in a sea of concrete. It's the only community garden around in the entire area. And today we're here to talk about bees, honeybees specifically, and do a hive inspection. So thank you all for being here with me. All right, so we're standing a few yards away from the hives right now and locating your hives is very important because you can't just have it anywhere you got to have it in a space that's secure where the bees are out of public view um, so right here we have we're in new york city and so we have um, a main avenue right here and another street both trafficked and so we want to make sure that people don't feel threatened by the hives and don't do anything silly um, by seeing the hive. So basically, this is a community garden. Um, there are garden beds everywhere. And so you don't want the entrance to be um, directed towards the gardeners. So I purposely directed the entrance against that back gate. So the bees have to fly towards that and then up and then out. All right, so we're gonna go into the hive area right now. The kind of inspection we're gonna to do today where we open up the hive, you wanna limit how frequently you do those. Visual inspection essentially means just going to the hive, standing in front of the hive, noticing the behavior of the bees, um, whether there are enough bees going in and coming out. In terms of when to do a hive inspection, that's very important too. You don't wanna do it at the end of the day because all of the bees will be coming back um, at that time and there will be more bees in the hive at that time. You also don't want to do it early in the morning, midday, um, maybe late afternoon is the best time to do it. You don't want to do an inspection when it's raining outside because they're not going to be foraging when it's raining and you don't want to get the bees wet. They don't like being wet. Um, so not during the rain and they also can be a little aggressive in cloudy weather. So nice sunny warm day above 55 degrees um, is when you want to do a hive inspection. So before we get into the inspection, I do want to explain some basic terms for a bee hive. First, this is called a Langstroth hive, and it's what most beekeepers use. Um, and the different parts of the Langstroth hive are called one, the brood box, and brood is essentially um, bee babies. This is what we call a super. A super is basically what's superimposed on the brood box. Between this deep and this deep, we have what's called a queen divider, right? And because we want to separate the honey from brood and eggs, etc. Why? Because when we harvest honey, we want to make sure that we're not getting larvae, we're not getting essentially bee babies mixed up with the honey. And so what this does is it prevents the queen from getting into this super, um, what's called a honey super, um, so that the eggs can only be laid in these two uh, boxes. I put some smoke up towards the front at the entrance, put smoke um, under the telescoping cover, it's called the inner cover. So I'm going to take the telescoping cover off. So uh, let's uh, crack this open a little bit. I mean, I really try as hard as possible to, um, to, to not kill or crush any bees um, during an inspection. This is the honey super. Um, and so what I want to do first um, is to check to see if the bees are in fact um, storing honey in these frames. Right away, I can see that um, there is honey in here. What that means is that most likely the rest of the frames will be um, full of honey as well um, because um, the outermost frame is usually um, the frame that they work on last. This top super was empty about four weeks ago. There was no honey in any of the frames about four weeks ago. And what I'm seeing here right now is a beautiful, beautiful Ooh. sight. This, my friends, is a frame 
that is full, completely packed with honey. And so what I'm doing right now is do, I'm holding this and then I'm pulling this up again, going very slowly. And you can see that the bees are being very, very calm um, because I'm going very slowly. You can see how this frame is also full of honey. I would say this has about, you know, um, eight, nine pounds of honey. Um, and that fresh cream colored wax is what they cap it with. Generally, when you're doing a hive inspection, you are technically looking for the queen. But what I'm really focused on right now is what are signs that the queen is alive, that it's a healthy colony. Uh, and the best way to uh, determine that is just to see if there is a good brood pattern. Essentially, is the queen laying eggs. I'm going to pull this out and I, and I see that nice brood pattern that I mentioned. This is a much lighter frame. So check this out. This is beautiful brood pattern. I'm feeling good that this is a healthy hive. Um, I'm looking at the other side too. Um, and you know, this side looks pretty good too. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is put this back, but before I put it back, I'm gonna glimpse in here to see if there's a brood pattern in there, is a nice brood pattern in there as well. And I do see nice brood pattern. So there's no need for me to really continue. Let's get some smoke actually. There's no need for me to really continue checking the, um, the, the hive. And please do not take more than half of the honey. Um, they need the honey themselves. Also do not take honey from them towards the end of summer because they need that honey through the winter. So if you're taking honey from them at the end of summer, you're essentially taking their food for the winter. Now, some beekeepers give them sugar water. Personally, I think that they're better off with the own, their own honey, with honey that they produce. Like, would you rather have honey, Axel, or would you rather have sugar water? Honey. And so, you know, that's how much the hive um, means to each individual bee. They're willing to sacrifice their own lives. They put their colony's life ahead of their own life. Hello, I am uh, Justin Butts, and today I'm going to be going over doing a hive inspection. So here we are at the apiary at Soulfire Farm. There are five beehives in the apiary right now. Positioned so they're not in direct sunlight, but also somewhat in shade. You want it to be like a mix of sun and shade, but you don't want them to have the sun just beating down on them all day. And you also don't want them to be in a spot that's super windy. You want them to have protection from the wind and the harsh elements. Uh, right now I'm just filling my smoker. You need to get your smoker lit. Never go in the hives unless you have your smoker with you or you, you won't be able to calm the bees down. They will they'll start like, acting very aggressively and there'll be really nothing you can do about it. Um, I'm using raw cotton as the fuel of my smoker and I also have some uh, wood stove pellets. Uh, I mix those together because the cotton is kind of expensive and the wood will burn too hot. But you always want to make sure you have a hive tool. You're going in the hive. I have my smoker going. It's putting out good smoke. It's lit. You don't want to have any hive open for longer than about 15 minutes, or you can start to have foreign bees come and attack the hive and steal the honey and you know, all kinds of problems. Can so first thing you're going to do, when you're going to go in the hive. You want to smoke the entrance. So I have two deep bodies on this hive. I'm, at this point, all of the, all eight frames in this are full. So I actually need to put a super on this. Uh, I might even bring one out this afternoon and put it on here, seeing how full this hive is. Because we're checking, we want to make sure the hive is on a swarm. Because that, when that happens, half your bees would actually leave with the queen, and the hive would have to make a new queen. So we want to do everything we can to avoid swarm. We want to go as straight as possible to pull the frame out to avoid crushing bees. And always just rest it on the hive rather than. The last thing you want to risk doing is dropping a frame. When you have the frame, you're going to look at it, and we're looking at to see what's in the frame. So this frame is a frame of honey and pollen. The little yellow dots you see are pollen, and all the other cells I can see, I don't know if you can, they're filled with honey. You'll probably see it start dripping out in a second. I'm going to turn it over. I'll look at the other side. Now here, you can see capped honey, and then 
honey that they're filling. So they'll fill all of them up and they'll eventually cap them over like that. And that's honey that's filled and done. And when they would get to that point is when, the, if this whole thing was like that, and then a honey super, I would take that one. So I put this frame rest here. So I can place that right there like that. And then I, that gives me, I can work the rest of the hive now like I'm in a file cap. And I can slide the frames back and forth. So I always start with the back one first if I can get it off the wall. And again, I'm looking for the queen. And I'm also looking to see what they're doing. So here is another reason we're doing the inspection. You see how we hive tool? Right here, we have some burr comb that they're making. I typically will remove this because one is a spot where they'll start making new queens and I don't want them to make new queens because that'll leave us swarming. And also, it takes up space in your hive and will make it difficult for you to move your frames around. So this frame otherwise looks pretty fantastic. So I'm just going to slide this right back in the same position that you got it from facing the same direction. This one looks different than the last one. So at the top here, this is more capped honey, like we talked about. And then if you get into here, you see we have this frame filled with capped brood. These larger cells that you see, they're like bullets sticking out on the drone, I mean on the frame. Those are actually drone cells. And then at the bottom and top would be the queen cells. Also, if you see one of those cells has been turned in a 90 degree angle, that would also indicate that it would be a new queen cell. So these are, it takes 24 days for a new worker bee to come out. So that's what's in these primarily. And the big, if you see a big one that's sticking out like a bullet, like those right there, those are drones. And those will come out in 20, 24 days for a worker, 21 days for a drone. And then a new queen will take 16 days. Now this is what you want to see. You want to see one egg in each cell. You, want to, you don't want to see two or three eggs. If you see multiple eggs, it could be a sign that your queen isn't there anymore. It could be a sign that one of the other bees has started laying eggs. Because every bee in here is a female, and once the queen is gone, there's no more pheromone in the hive to suppress them, and they'll all start laying eggs. But they'll all be males, and the colony won't be able to survive off that. The only cells that I typically remove is the burr comb, like you saw me remove, hanging off the bottom of that one, and anything that looks like a queen cell. And you want to get every possible queen cell that's in there. Um, but you want to make sure your queen is also still in the colony before you destroy all your queen cells because you don't want to be queenless. I don't, oh, there is a new queen cell. You see this one right here. It's aiming straight down. You see how all these for the workers and drones are aiming up? Well, they're, they'd be hanging like this. But the queen is pointing straight down to the ground when she is born. Now, because I want to not have swarming, I'm gonna go ahead. And I've, I've seen signs that my queen is still present because I've seen eggs. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that queen cell because as a first year beekeeper, the last thing I want is for my bees to swarm on me. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna pry. The bees have glued all this together with a substance they make called propolis. Lift, gently place this down over here. Now, the frames you just saw in that upper hive body are all newly filled with wax by the bees. So you're gonna see the ones in here are gonna be much more of a brown color. This is a slatted bottom board. This is where they can come in and kind of rest before going up into the hive. Because the bees naturally wanna move up in the tree so what I've done is I've taken the top hive body and I've put it on the bottom, taking the lower body and putting it on top of that. And that can, that is a technique for the summer to give you a little more time before supering and to let the colony build more before adding to it. So that's my, pretty much my hive check for the day. Um, I did not find the queen, but that does not mean she's not there. I saw lots of eggs and I did the reversal. So I'll come back and I'll check the egg situation again in two weeks.
and I'll go from there. But that was my hardship.